Hey guys, welcome back to episode 2 of All The Mod 7 To The Sky. So in the last episode we set up our 7 system here to give us some basic resources from cobblestone byproducts. And we used integrated dynamics to make this happen. So to begin with here I want to start with some upgrades. We need to improve our input resource generation rate, craft up a few more player simulators and implement some more sieves on these ones that are missing, and perhaps add a few more setups to handle things like crushed endstone and crushed netherrack. Let's get rocking. So I started first of all by getting some materials processed and I wanted to get some upgrades to the drawers. I crafted up the basic copper upgrade and then gathered some obsidian using our philosopher's stone. That allows us to get a void upgrade for some of the junk items that we get from gravel. And just to get the ball rolling before we have upgrades on the mechanism crushers, I filled up the input drawers manually a few times just to get us the resources to upgrade quicker. Then I wanted to work on the next player simulators, so I switched our igneous extruder over to making end stone. I was hoping it would be a viable way to get the ender pearls for the proto chorus that we need, but the drop chance is just way too low, so I think I'm just going to stick with crafting it with iron and the philosopher's stone. To get the rest of the integrated dynamics components, we do need more logic directors as we saw last episode, and what it comes down to basically is farming a bunch of mineral trees. I had this kind of crazy idea, oh it does work, nice. It used to be possible that you could cut down whole trees with create, I want to see if that's still possible here, using this thing, the mechanical saw. So if we place this against the tree, we have to rotate it. I think we need the wrench, right? Oh, we get it from the quest. Nice. Yeah, I think if we rotate this... Okay, that works. And we hand crank this to give it some stress units. Does it cut the whole tree? Ah, maybe it just needs the last log. Ah, it does work. Okay, does it work on mineral? That's the question. I think probably we have to get rid of these roots around the outside. Okay, I'm hoping this works with the chorus and some of the logs. <gasps> Amazing. Alright, that is nice. That is really, really nice to see. If I can actually learn to place this thing. There we go. <laughs> oh, I've missed playing with Create. There's so many cool things you can do with Create. It's awesome. Alright, so as you can see behind me, we now have the extra four sieve setups that we were missing. Not fully integrated at this point, there's still a few steps that we need. But a few things before we proceed, I did add some mechanism speed and energy upgrades to all of these things, they're all maxed on the energy upgrades. The speed is kind of variable, since we're using the same amount of lava in most cases to power a variable amount of crushers. But this one doing gravel has the most speed upgrades in it, and still only uses 63 FE per tick, which is really not too bad. Although on this particular setup I did have to double up our lava generation just to keep this magmatic dynamo full. At some point though we'll probably centralise all of our power and we'll use flux points or some sort of wireless network to be able to connect and power all of this stuff. I also upgraded a bunch of the sieve meshes. I think most of these are now emerald in all of all three of the original setups. And I implemented some filters on the vacuumulators. I noticed some of them were stealing drops from each other. The filters required signalum which is actually quite easy to craft in dust form though in this pack. What took the longest though was getting the rest of these player simulators, but we got 8 more to finish the rest of these setups. All of them have got a drawer controller, or storage controller. They're all going to need vacuumulators. With their respective item fillers, we'll set them as we go. So right now we're seven gravel, sand and dust, which is giving us all the products you can see in the drawers right here. Now the question becomes how do we get our hands on crushed nether rack so that we can sieve for primarily netherite? That's going to allow us to upgrade all of the meshes to the last tier. And probably the best bet is to use an igneous extruder, might as well craft another one. And I suppose we'll just need one more crusher to make it into crushed netherrack. There's one more of those. I guess we'll need a dynamo and some pipes to power it as well. Alright, so we're going to have to change out the layout just a bit to account for the fact that we need to have water and lava next to this igneous extruder to get it to work. But something like this should work. We need witch water on one side. Careful not to stand in this thing, I think it poisons you actually. Block of redstone underneath. Wait a second, maybe wood trapdoors is not the best thing to place next to lava. <laughs> Let's maybe switch them out with some framed glass trapdoors. I'm really not up for starting a fire today. And in fact, maybe that means we have to switch out this dark oak log. I don't think we, we're going to get away with putting that in front of here. But this should mean we're making netherrack, right? Yes, perfect. Now we got to get that into the crusher. Oh, this is accepting cobblestone. Oh, that's not what we want. Is there a way to filter these things? 
Okay, I couldn't see any sort of filler, but I think there is this filler destination tool. Let's see how this thing works. If it works. Okay, randomly clicking the pipes didn't work. I think, <laughs> I think what we need is an upgraded upgrade. Yeah, the basic pipe upgrade, then the improved, then the advanced. I think we need the advanced at least. Oh, this is actually really cool. You have to, first of all, click the destination that you want. Give it the advanced pipe upgrade, add a filler, tell it that you want to send netherrack only, and the destination you want it to send to. The only thing is that's only for the extract of the machine, not for the insert of the crusher. So I think we're going to have to admit defeat and just separate all the lines. <laughs> I didn't want to have to do this, but I think if we just cut it here... No, it has to be like, like this. Yeah, because we need two connections on the crucible. And one here for power. Okay. Yeah, first time. <laughs> we're still learning here. Yeah, and once we're able to get enough meshes, I think we can take this all the way up to emerald. These original sieves here have been running for actually quite a few hours by now. There's nine emerald meshes, which is the highest we can go at the moment. Awesome. Last thing to do is set the vacuumulator filter and make sure to set the extract here. That's going to send it all into the drawer controller. Oh yeah, and to link all of these drawers. I always forget about this step. We got to account for the spillages here as well, so we need the trapdoors around the outside, but I think I might actually switch them all out for the framed glass versions. It might be a bit nicer, actually. Oh, and we're missing some meshes on this one. Hopefully we have enough glass. These furnaces here are definitely a another bottleneck that we have to address. There's six. <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure we have more. Maybe. Oh, come on, who left this space here? <laughs> I noticed in the chat also, your items lie on the ground. This place is not intended for graves. Does that just mean we lost everything? Oh, this was the valuable chest place. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that just happened. All right, we're back. I had to take a break after that. <laughs> I went down and checked. There's definitely no grave down there. So we lost whatever we had. Basically a full inventory, but I'm not salty at all. Because I have Skystone implemented here. And of course the rain starts as I start to record. So the Skystone dust, we are actually getting when we sift dust. And for the time being, we're just manually transporting this down between the drawers. This is just acting as a small buffer. It goes to an enrichment chamber, turns to regular Skystone, and then hits this uh, flux hammer, which crushes it down and then gets sent to the sieve like the rest of the setups. And over here on the right, I also added in Endstone. The Endstone, of course, gives us Chorus, Ender Pearls, and Platinum. Slowly right now, because it's absolutely trash. <laughs> and same over here, this thing gives us Charged Ceres, Ceres Quartz Crystals, and Ceres Quartz Seeds, which do not seem to be picked up by the Vacuumulator. But I think that's okay, these are the ones that don't despawn, and they will actually grow up to be the fully grown Ceres Quartz Crystals. So we have the basics down. To upgrade this any further, we need to think about power. I know that we've spent a very long time on this sieve setup, but I think it's going to be, it's going to pay off for us long term, I believe. Oh yeah, I upgraded these furnaces to emerald. It seems the quest book is still a work in progress, but it does hint towards a bigger reactor. And I've never played with this since 112 actually, so I'm not sure exactly what's changed. However, I do know that this thing is powered with uranium, and we have just about 1.5k uranium pieces. What well, like is the reactor casings? Okay, this doesn't actually seem too bad, and graphite is just smelted coal. Okay, let me gather a few resources and we'll try to build this thing. Alright, so it makes sense that we start with the controller block. We're also going to need two access ports. One will accept the uranium fuel and the other one will output waste. We'll add a redstone port for a redstone control. Oh yeah, and I forgot about the redstone power tap to extract the RF. That can go on the back for now, I guess. Fuel rods in the middle. And the rest is pretty much just reactor casings besides the top of the fuel rods, which need a control rod. There we go, we got a reactor. Awesome. Oh, and they changed the GUI. Alright, so we have to give this thing fuel. One access port will be for input, and this one we can change to output waste. I'm hoping this uranium works from all the ores. It seems to be filling up the reactor, which is good. And from what I understand, this thing doesn't explode. But we do want to try to be fuel efficient with this thing. And we're making 7,000 RF per tick. That's really not too bad. 1.4 millibuckets per tick fuel usage. In the old mod, it used to be possible that you could add things on the inside as coolant. 
to make it more fuel efficient. I want to see if that's still the case. Does water work? I'm not sure. Let's find out. Let's see, we're making 7.6. I think that's higher, right? And we're only consuming 1.2. It seems to have helped. And it's not exploding, so I guess... <laughs> I guess we keep the water. Next, we gotta make sure that we can figure out how to work this redstone port to make sure it only turns on when we need to run it and we require power. We don't want it to run when the internal buffer is full. Let's make ourselves an energy cube for the for somewhere for the energy to go. Oh, which is actually a quest. Wow, that filled up quick. Yeah, so I added a second redstone port on this. The first one will output a redstone signal whenever the output stored is below 50%. I think I might change this to 25% though. So when this internal buffer hits 25%, it's going to output a redstone signal. And this one, we want to turn the reactor on when it receives a signal. So I think on signal is what we want, right? Not on pulse. And that should mean the reactor only runs when it needs to, and it shouldn't consume any extra uranium. Oh, and it gives us cyanide in the hopper, even though this is the input one. Huh. Yeah, this is our waste. I don't know exactly what we can use this for in this pack. I would like to see if there's a way we can get more out of our uranium. So right now we're just directly smelting all of the raw ore that we're getting from the sieves. In fact, I think this is all the uranium we've got now. Oh, we got two more stacks here in raw form. The rest was used actually crafting the, the reactor itself. I want to see if there's a way we can double these ores. Okay, we can do it manually. We know that. We don't want to do it manually though. <laughs> and we have some power to work with now. So what is the best way? Okay, the, there's the immersive engineering, which will give us two, guaranteed. We can crush it to dust for two, but that means we have to smelt it. I assume there's the whole mechanism 5x ore processing, which we're not going to get into today. Many pages of options here. But I think the one we're going to go for is from Thermal. Yeah, the pulverizer. Also a quest. Uh, let's give ourselves <laughs> some space back here. So 25% chance to double the ores. Also, we got to mute this thing. I love this new built-in muffler that we got on our player. Yeah, so 25% to double the ores. But we can do one better. There is this auxiliary processive. Increases the secondary product output chance by an extra 15%. Consuming more power, of course, but we have the power to work with now. And one of the things we need is bronze for this. Oh, and there's no induction smelter anymore. Does that not exist? It does exist, but the recipe for bronze doesn't exist in there. Well, I think the second best way is just to craft the bronze dust from copper and tin dust. And we're making enough now that I think I want to start batch crafting, so we're going to do full stacks of everything. We gotta first pulverize all of these ingots, and I'm gonna add one of these integral components, which increases the RF usage to 60, but definitely increases the speed. Yeah, going forward, I wanna start badge crafting more so that we have things before we actually need it. A big part of why I invested so much in this thing. Alright, there's our process of... I'm actually not sure if these things stack. It might be worth trying that. Does it let me put in extra? Okay, it does let me put in extra. And still it only consumes 60 RF per tick. Ah, uh, I don't know if this works or not. <laughs> let's find out on the uranium. Let's put in, yeah, this full stack and let's see how much we get out of the other side. Oh, it's very slow now. All right, you know what? I think it's time. I think it's time we start looking into some applied energistics too. One of my all-time favorite mods. And we've already completed the first quest here by getting our hands on some Certus Quartz. We're getting this from Sifting Dust and then from the Sky Stone. Already at 1.5k, wow. And we, in fact, we even get Fluix from this, which is another dust we'll need for this. And we have power, or we should have power, to get all of this going. First step is to make our inscriber and the charger. I'm hoping there's an alternative option for this. Do we have Lazy AE2 in this? We have Lazier AE2. I don't know what that is, but I'm hoping... Wait a second, what is this? Fluix Aggregator? Oh, this does exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, we can grow the crystals this way. Otherwise, we have to throw it in water and wait 20 minutes IRL. And I'm, we ain't doing that. Wait a second, maybe we are. Look at the recipe for this thing. <laughs> Fluix steel? Okay, we need a matter infuser first. Oh my goodness, look at this. All right, we have to do some of the vanilla way first. Let's follow the quest at least. Wait a second, I was wrong. We can do this in the enrichment chamber. Nice. Alright, so after badge crafting a lot of the basic AE2 components, we got this new multi servo press as a way to make plates more efficiently. We can get one ingot to one plate with this. And using some iron plates, we need to get our inscribers, which normally can be found in meteors in the world. However, here can be made directly in our inscriber. So we got the engineering press, the logic press, Certus should be calculation. Yeah, and finally the silicon press. There's our quest. 
Oh, it also wants us to make the meteorite compass. Mm, this quest book could be updated. <laughs> I think this is meant for the regular all the mods. It still talks about finding in meteors and, and whatnot. It's an easy enough recipe, but I don't think we'll ever yet end up using it. Goodbye. Next thing we have to do is get the AE processors. And I noticed we do actually have 82 things. Another applied energistics add-on. And this has the easy recipe for the advanced inscriber. All we're required to do is make two of these calculation processors. We start with the circuits and then put that together with the silicon and I think it's redstone as the catalyst. Two of those. The thing with this inscriber is it's very hard to automate and you can only have one item in each slot at a time. Terrible. However, with the advanced inscriber, I believe that is no longer the case. We can have hoppers set up on the inserts and on the extract. It allows more space for acceleration cards, and it should also smart fill as well. And we can easily just throw in some stacks of input items to batch craft with. Last episode when I said hopefully we can come up with something cool for the base, this is definitely not cool. <laughs> oh my goodness, this netherrack. I, I hate it. It's so bad. Who thought this was a good idea? Anyways, let's get some digital storage on the go. So we need some ME controllers. The controller is really the center block of the AE network. The vast majority of you guys are going to be familiar with AE2, but channels are enabled here. And whenever that's the case, I'm going to set up our standard sort of P2P connection setup. I'll try to explain it when we do it, but I don't think that's something we'll set up this episode. Oh, it wants us to make an ME chest, really? There you go. Yeah, I'm really not happy with the way the base is turning out, and I think we're going to do a complete overhaul. At the very least, the block palette, right? Which means some things are inevitably going to get shifted around. But that is quite easy to do once we have everything digitized. And we can do that using these 1K ME storage disks. Actually, maybe we go up to 4K. How much is that going to cost us? Really not too much at all, just some extra redstone and a calculation processor. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I invested in the acceleration cards here. It really, really makes a difference. Oh, nice. It's even 3D now. Was it like this in Create Above and Beyond? I don't I don't remember. I've played so much 1.12 applied energistics. This is really the first time I'm checking out some of the new textures. This energy cell I'm actually a fan of. Is the controller any different? I think slightly. Man, I'm not used to all this new stuff. So we need to get some power to our applied energistics system, which is kind of the reason I put it here at least to begin with, but to account for the fact that we don't really have cables that can transfer that much power, I think I might just run an applied energistics line down here, hook this straight up to this energy cube. If we see output on the top, we can put that on the energy acceptor, and then just plug it into 82 here. We don't need controllers if, as long as we stick within eight channels, but all we really need right now is a crafting terminal and our disk drives. I, I was able to make up 10 of these things, which should be able to handle all of our items and more. It looks like the amounts for the storage cells are all the same in this version. 63 types and 4096 bytes. And we can now begin one of the most satisfying processes in all of modded Minecraft. Just shift click absolutely everything. And we definitely want small centered number of items. Standard search keep. Oh, they called it remember search this time. Yeah, this one. Anyone who does it differently is wrong. <laughs> all right, is it all going to fit in here? I hope so. Yep, basically everything we own is now in our AE system. We really don't have that much stuff, actually. Majority of it, I guess, is in these drawers. Y you know what? We should claim our quest rewards. I still get comments on my DJ2 playthrough. In fact, basically every LP I've ever done on this channel of people saying claim your quest rewards. <laughs> I don't know how it bothers you guys so much. Okay, that was a lot of stuff. Now that some time has passed, we have 42 netherite scraps to our name, which really isn't too much just because of our poorer generation rate of netherrack. However, that is the one I want to upgrade first. We got enough for 10 netherite ingots. Oh, and we have to do this in the smithing table. It only costs one as well. That's pretty good. The first craft with our AE system. But you can't right click anymore on the search bar. I wonder why they made that change. You also can't press Control A to highlight all of JEI search. So you're forced to use backspace, which actually doesn't even work anymore. I don't know. There's a few quirks of this version I'm not used to yet. The reason I want to upgrade this first is because it gives us access to a 30% drop chance at Inferium Essence, and this can allow us to get into mystical agriculture. Although I believe we need Unobtainium for this. Olimodium for this, yeah. I think that we're also going to upgrade a few more of these other ones. It doesn't make sense to upgrade the gravel one. All the odds, as far as I can see, are exactly the same between the two versions, which is odd. Not sure if that's intentional or not. The odds of Endstone, though, are slightly better for in our favour, so I'm going to switch out these ones at least. Probably just one for now, since it, it only uses one at a time. And actually, that is just about all the differences I can see between Netherite and Emerald. 
not worth. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but that's the situation. And now that we have power this episode, I think it's reasonable that we look at a way of transporting it over to wherever we need it in our base. We don't want to run power lines everywhere if we can avoid it. And there is flux networks in this pack, flux points and flux plugs. And to get this, we do need flux dust, which I just noticed we can actually sieve for with basalt. This was really sneaky. Look, at it. it's like way on the back page and it can only be done in a netherite mesh which means we're missing a setup over here and that's going to throw everything out of balance <laughs> because everything is perfectly symmetrical like this. Oh, this makes me very, very sad. However, we have a second problem and that is to get basalt in the igneous extruder, we do need blue ice, which means we need packed ice, which means we need regular ice. And besides using maybe alchemistry water or something like that, actually, this might be our solution. Besides this or bees, I think we would have to have silk touch. We can get it in the blast chiller, but this does require packed ice in its craft. And I don't see any other way to get ice. We can use the Philosopher's Stone, but this means it leaves the ice in world, similar to the way we get obsidian. So actually, I forgot how we used this. The last time I used it was in Divine Journey 2. This thing gives us straight water, H2O. Then we can toss that into a compactor. Wait a second, wrong machine, we need a combiner. Yeah, this way we can get our packed ice, craft that into blue ice, and configure this igneous extruder. It's actually a very simple setup for this one. We don't need a crusher to make it crushed or anything. So in theory, it should be a lot faster since we're bypassing one of the steps here. And this spot was originally intended for soul sand, but other than solium, we can get everything else here using a different method. And in fact, I think solium, we can also get a different way. I'm not entirely sure yet, maybe through bees. But yeah, I guess this is what the other netherite meshes can be used for. We gotta set the filters here. And we even get amethyst shards here. I wonder if we can use these for anything cool. Maybe as a base decoration. Yeah, we get runes, we get flux, we get amethysts, and we get some more skystone dust as well. I think we really have to do something about these Ceres Quartz seeds. There seems to be quite a lot of them in there, especially when we increase our production of skystone. I don't know how we handle that yet though. I would love to find a better method of getting obsidian as well, but I'm not really seeing it at the moment. At least not with the options we have available to us. Oh, and I do also want to mention, I know that some things have EMC here. There's actually not too much in this pack with EMC, but just out of principle, I think we're going to avoid using Project E in that way, especially for things like the ingots, and even for the building blocks. I think I would like to choose more fun ways to automate this. So yeah, we're going to avoid EMC use. But yeah, with the obsidian, we can craft the flux cores, and with the flux cores and some redstone, we can get a flux point which is used to receive energy. And the flux plug, I think we put on the other side of our reactor. So yeah, in fact, we can immediately remove this cable here. Flux plug on the energy cube. We want to create a new network. We can just call it reactor power. Transfer limit of 800,000, but I think we can just bypass, right? I mean, there's no way we're sitting in that much right now. But yeah, the other side, the flux point, we can put directly on our AE system. Select the same network and it should automatically be drawn power. Yeah, only 30, only 20 RF per tick. It's hard to judge what exactly that number is. Not much RF per tick to keep this thing running the way we have it. But with that, I think that's a good point to wrap up the episode. I'm going to craft a few more of those points. That means we should be able to provide more power to these crushers and be able to upgrade them further and therefore speed up the process of seven. But yeah, I think we might look into some create and farming next episode, which will be fun. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode.